Hello, my name is Hanno Rein, and in video number 8 of the Rebound YouTube tutorial series, I'm going to show you how you can set up complicated architectures such as quadruple star systems in Rebound. So let's get started. By default, Rebound uses what's called Jacobi coordinates. These coordinates are very useful for setting up planetary systems. You need to know when you use Jacobi coordinates to add the particles in the right order. Say you want to add two planets around the star, you first add the innermost planet and then you add the outermost planet. The way Jacobi coordinates work is that the outermost planet uses the center of mass of the inner planet and the star as the primary particle and it adds an orbit around this virtual primary particle, not around the star itself. Let me show you how this works in a simulation. First, we'll import Rebound. And then we'll set up a simple simulation. We'll add two par uh, three particles. First, the star, mass of one at the origin then a planet with mass 10 to the minus 3 at 1 AU, and then let's add another planet, the same mass at a semi major axis of 2. We can visualize this system using the orbit plot function. And you can see we have one star, two planets, just as we wanted. Now we can do other things with Rebound, for example, add moons around particles. To add a moon around a planet, all you have to do is specify the primary that you want to use. In this case, the primary would be the planet. If you specify the primary for a new planet, to, for a new particle to be the planet, then the orbital parameters are with respect to that primary. And this can generate a moon. Once again, let me show you how that looks like in a simulation. We use the same simulation as above, and we add one more particle. This time, even smaller mass, let's say 10 to minus 6 for the moon, using a small semi-major axis of 0.1, and we're adding it around the outer planet. In this case, the primary is sim.particles to the outermost planet we've added. If we call orbit plot again, to visualize this system, you'll see that this does not give us the desired output. We see that another particle has been added, but it is really not at the look, not on the orbit that we want it to be. We wanted it to orbit the planet. What's going on here is that the orbit plot function cannot possibly find out which particle is orbiting which other particle without running an integration. And really what's shown here are instantaneous orbits. So we need to be just specific and tell this orbit plot function what we want to have. So first of all, let's only plot the inner two planets. We can do that by specifying which particles to plot. In this case, we want to show particles one and two, the first two planets. This will show only the planets, not the moon. Then we create another instance of the orbit plot. use the same simulation, but we only want to show particle 3. This is the moon. And we tell it specifically that the primary is particle with index 2. We also tell it to reuse the figure from our first orbit block instance and the same for the axis. This allows us to overplot the orbits on top of the uh, previous plot. And now we get a visualization that looks like what we intend. Two planets and one planet, one moon orbiting the planet on a very tight orbit around the, um, the planet. Once again, note that these are instantaneous orbits. The moon does not really follow the trajectory that's indicated by the circle around the planet because the planet also moves around the star. So in reality, what the moon's orbit looks like is a spiral 
but the orbit plot routine will always plot either an ellipse or a circle. So these are instantaneous orbits and it requires some knowledge of how orbits work to interpret them correctly. It can still give us useful information about how the system is set up. Okay, now that we know how to set up a moon system like this, let's set up a quadruple star system. The specific system we're going to look at here consists of four stars with equal mass. Each uh, always there, there are two binaries on a on a tight orbit, and then the two binaries are are orbiting each other. Okay, let's um, set this up. We start with a new simulation. And we just add the first binary. So we say sim.add, first particles at the origin, the other particle we set on the same major axis of one, but this time with equal mass. Now the trick here is to add another particle for our second binary that's really the sum or the center of mass for this binary. So we're adding a third particle. This is a dummy particle that we'll remove later with a mass of two and the orbital parameters that we want. For example, a semi-major axis of 10. Now we can visualize the system again. And we see we have one tight binary and then another object around it. What we now want to do is make a binary out of this second, this, this second object orbiting the central object over here. To do this, we'll simply set up a second temporary simulation. So this is a new simulation. And for this new simulation, we add the binary, the second binary that we want. In this case, it's the same as the original one. So one particle at the origin with mass one, the another particle at the same major axis of one and also mass two. Now we have effectively two simulations. And what we'll do is we'll add the particles that we added to the second part simulation to the first one. So for each particle in sim2.particles, we add this to our first simulation. This makes a copy of the particle and then adds it to simulation. Now we don't want them to be added at the origin. We want them to be added where this, um, where our dummy particle is over here. So to do that, we can say p plus sim.particles2. What this is doing is adding component-wise the x, y, z positions and velocities for those two particles, the particle in the second simulation and our dummy particle, and adds them together. It also adds the mass. We don't want that, so we say sim.particles2.m equals to zero before we start this addition. Now we just need to remove the dummy particle, sim.particles, uh, sim.remove, index 2, remove the index 2 particle. And now we're left with four particles in the original simulation. We don't need our dummy simulation anymore. We can delete that too. If we want to visualize the orbits, we need to do something very similar to what we've done with our moon. Let's copy those two lines. For the first binary, we just specify that we only have one particle orbiting the central object. For the second one, we, orbit, we have another um, particle orbiting, this time the second binary's primary, and we plot them in the same plot. We want to say that they're both, um, if they're visible, we need to adjust the, um, the limits of the plot, so we say or we plot one dot x limit equal to say minus five to fifteen, and or we plot one dot y limits from minus ten to ten, and we say or we plot one dot update. Now we see our two binaries, and they're once again instantaneous orbits. I hope you found that useful. If you'd like to learn more about how this orbit plot routine works and how to use the various options, have a look at this IPython tutorial 
uh, listed here. And in general, if you have questions about Rebound or you're not sure about how to set up your simulation, feel free to open an issue on GitHub and either myself or someone else would be happy to help you out. Thank you for watching and I hope I see you soon again.